the insistently repetitive intestinal disease I had even from when I was taller was getting worse. I knew I was dying already. I went to a hospital to check my condition, but I was surprised when the doctors told me that there was nothing wrong with me. A year later, the pains in my intestines were becoming unendurable. So I had to be admitted in Korlo, Bu Hospital, a uh, distinguished hospital in Ghana. My condition became more critical while I was still in Korobu, and then I was just 23 years old. The only remedy I could have was to undergo a surgery, but the surgery had to be delayed until 9 March 2009. A nice doctor thought he was trying to help me when he told me of how risky the operation was going to be. He even assured me that my age ratings were mostly not likely to be able to survive this kind of surgery. I did not even think about what the doctor said because I had already determined to go through with the operation due to the unbearable pain I was going through. I guess the bodily suffering I was going through did not allow me think of the risk I will be experiencing. Then I just needed something to relieve me of the anguish I was having. During the surgery, I felt my soul left my body and I was transported to heaven. My experience while I was in heaven was mind-blowing and I would like to share my experience with you. I would not even wish my worst enemy to experience half of the tremendous pain I felt in my chest or even the severe unexplainable anguish I was feeling in my heart. I could not stop shouting. I had already been administered anesthesia, but three hours into my surgery at Cordal Hospital an intense pain shot through my heart. And I suddenly jerked up and wished I could die so I won't have to experience this kind of pain ever again. Then I recalled the words of the other doctor. No one your age has ever been able to survive this kind of surgery. So this was truly the end of the road for me. But even as I remembered this saying, I still felt like I had taken the right decision. I have been experiencing these pains in my intestines since my early 20s. I already knew I could die, but I had already ran out of options on what to do, so I had to consent to the surgery. I knew the risks involved, but I told the doctor that I was a Christian, and so I had nothing to fear because I had faith in God and not in systematically collection of observation and facts. But now, three hours into my surgery, I started thinking I had made a deadly mistake and this surgery was probably a bad idea. The pain I was feeling in my heart was as if a sharp sore was frozen inside of me. The only thing I could remember was that I was screaming my head off till I left planet Earth. My transition out of Earth instantly, I found myself hurriedly zooming through the clouds like a rocket. Then I found myself in an attractive garden filled with trees and a paved path. I started walking down the paved path and I had not walked for long before a giant creature blocked me. He asked what I was doing in the garden and I told him that I had no idea how I even got to the garden. I told him that the last I remember when that was in the hospital. And the next moment I found myself in this beautiful garden. The being then introduced itself to me as an angel of God and gave me reassurance that my presence in the garden was not a mistake. The angel then asked me to follow him. As we kept on moving ahead, we came across different kinds of altar. The third altar we came across was dripping in a red color like liquid, which I later learned was blood. The angel then told me that the blood was not the blood of an animal, but it was the blood of Jesus Christ. And that blood is constantly begging for all humanity and that it is still interceding up until this moment. I was amused and wondered, was it not the same Jesus that died over 2000 years ago? If he was what then has been preserving his blood for so long, I was surprised because the blood I saw was very, very fresh. The angel then made me understand that the blood was still fresh new because it still has the ability to liberate and rescue humanity. Then I knew that there was an extreme, fact, extraordinary power that is in charge of the whole universe. We truly have a sovereign power which governs the whole universe, which is even above all the powers combined in this world. This made me realize the fact that God is all powerful and unexplainable because is it not amazing how blood that had been shed for more than 2000 years is still fresh and has not clothed after all this numerous years. The angel asked me to quicken my pace because we had little time to spend together and he had a lot of things to show me and to even tell me. We continued moving until we arrived at a glass made like house. There we saw a lot of people who were putting on spotless white outfits. They were all indistinguishable and joyous. When I raised my head, I saw two thrones and, and surprisingly, they were both occupied. I then asked the angel to know those who were occupying the throne. The angel then said to me, the first throne is being occupied by Abraham and the second throne is occupied by Moses. The angel gave me his consent when I asked him if I could be able to talk to any of those joyous people because I desperately wanted to know what was behind their happiness. Before I started talking to the people, 
I first asked the angel to tell me the name of the place we were. I was thrilled when he explained that we were in the sanctified place where souls are believed to live after death. He said that we were in paradise. He told me that this place was for the souls of men and women who died in Christ. I asked a man there how he had ended up in paradise. He told me that he spent all his days on earth trying to please God. He did things that God commands and avoided doing things that is displeasing to God. He told me that he lived a whole life on earth and after his death he found himself in heaven. Unfortunately for me, I did come across any other person whom I know. My tour guide, the angel, led me on until we got to a place where I saw three groups of angels doing different kinds of things. The three groups of angels, the first group of angels were serious, mindily picking things and putting things into a bag, which whenever it becomes filled up, they then took towards the direction which the angel was leading me. Curiosity took the better part of me, and I asked the angel to explain what was happening here, and also told me where he was taking me to. The angel looked at me briefly and told me to wait that when we got to where he was taking me, I would then understand what was happening. The second group of angels confused me, the more because they were bringing things from the place we were heading to and then taking them to the place we were leaving. I asked the angel to explain to me why this set of angels were returning, what the other set of angels were taking to the direction we were heading. The angel only told me that the second group of angels were not returning what the first group of angels had taken. He then told me to be patient that soon enough I would understand what was happening. Moving ahead, we came across a group of angels. In this group, some of the angels were busy, while more than half of the angels were just sitting down doing nothing. I knew there was every probability that if I asked the angel to explain what was happening, he was likely to tell me to wait till we got to our destination, but still I decided to try my luck and I asked him to tell me what was happening. I asked him to please make me understand why the first group of angels were filling their sack up and taking it to the direction we were heading to. And the second group of angels were diligently bringing things from the direction we were heading to and taking it to the place we were leaving. And yet in the third group of angels, some were busy while the majority were just sitting down idle. I did not know what prompted the angel to answer me, but he started explaining to me that the first group of angels were gathering the prayers of the children of God and were taking to the throne room of God. The second group of angels were bringing answers of prayers from the throne room of God and were delivering it to the saints on earth. And then the third group of angels were responsible for taking thanksgiving and praises offered to God by the saints on earth to the throne room of God. But majority were idle because most believers on earth find it unnecessary to give praises to God, thereby making the angels have nothing to take to the throne room of God. After my guide finished explaining these things to me, I discovered that we were getting closer to a building which beauty was impossible to describe. I discovered that the beauty became greater as we got closer to the place. The majestic residence, at last we got to a magnificent building. The building has an inscription that says the royal palace. I was astonished due to the unexplainable splendor that outlined the building. My amazement was tripled when we entered inside of the building. I am short of words to describe the elegance of the interior part of the building. I saw a being which I can never be able to efficiently describe sitting on the only throne in the building. I asked my guide who the being was. He said to me, this is the Lamb of God whose blood was shed for the remission of many sins. Immediately the angel finished speaking. I then said Jesus, and even before I finished calling that name, all the angels in the building prostrated simultaneously. I wondered why, so I asked the angel and he told me that at the mention of the name of Jesus, all the angels in heaven prostrate before the throne room of God. I saw the 24 elders prostrating before the throne room of Jesus. I noticed that each of the 24 elders worshiped Jesus in a characterized manner. An elder would first approach the throne of Jesus. He would then remove his crown and prostrate before Jesus, after which he would then worship Jesus before rejoining the other elders. Each of the elders continued worshiping Jesus in this manner. Then I learned what it truly meant to worship Jesus. I then understood what accurate devotion to Jesus means. I then comprehended that worshiping Jesus is all about submitting yourself to him and that pure worship is done in truth and in spirit. Then I looked at the face of Jesus all the radiance his face was illuminating is indescribable. I wanted to meet him and bow before his awesome. But the angel told me that he had a lot of things to show me and he also had limited time to spend with me. We then moved on to a deserted doorway. The angel told me that no one was allowed into the door, but we have been given an advantage to enter inside. 
when we entered into the door, I discovered that we had left heaven and we were descending downwards. We got to a place that was enveloped with blinding darkness. I have never experienced that kind of darkness before. I then knew that we really were far away from heaven. I then began to feel heat coming from where we were heading to. As we got closer, I started hearing screams from different angles. I heard voices of people shouting painfully. I became terrified and I asked the angel to explain to me where exactly we we're heading to. He told me as usual that when we got there, I would know. Then I began to see fire all around us. I began to hear more people shrieking loudly and painfully. You know, I heart skipped a bit when I saw a woman locked in a cage who was crying in great sorrows and agony. She began to beg and call on God to help her. When she noticed that her plea for help was futile, she immediately began to blaspheme God and began to insult Jesus. A demon suddenly appeared from nowhere and threw the woman amidst her plea for help back into the flames of fire. I indeed felt great pity for her. Truly, there was no pardon in hell. Ministers of God in hell. I saw many so-called ministers of God in hell. I asked the angel why they were in hell and he told me that these ministers were pretentious liars. Although they claimed to be using the power of God, but they were involved in occultism. He told me that not all ministers who claimed to love God were actually doing God's will. Some were just hiding behind the cloak of Christianity and performing unimaginable activities in the pretext of using God's authority. I saw many pastors burning in hell. They were desperately pleading for mercies, but Alice, there is no pardon in hell. The angel then told me that he would categorize the ministers into four categories so that I would understand why numerous men of God were suffering this kind of fate. He said the first category consisted of ministers who were engaging in illicit sexual affairs. These set of pastors were having sex with women who were not their wives. Some of them even did it while pretending to be delivering the woman from satanic oppression. These pastors were being tortured in hell. Their screams and crying were so pitiful. The second set of pastors were those engaged in demonic practices. These were the pastors who, while pretending to be godly, were also using demonic powers in their ministry. They had already sold their souls to the devil in exchange of fame. The third set of pastors were those who had committed murder. These pastors had killed innocent people and so they ended up in hell. The last set of pastors were the ones that loved money more than their God's given ministry. These pastors' excessive love for money landed them into hell. They were not even called by God. They do not love God, but they opened the ministry solely for materialistic gains. These pastors made money their gods and so they ended up in hell. I felt very bad when I heard all these things. I pitied the pastors so much, but there was nothing I could do to help any of them. I felt sad for them because they were already doomed to spend eternity in this place of torment. I saw what looked like a vast ocean of sea filled with people who were being tortured. The place was becoming hotter. So I pleaded with the angel to take me out of that place. Beloved hell is a place of great torment. Do everything you can to run away from hell. The angel then held my hands and we went back to heaven. We then returned to the place where Jesus was being worshipped. Then a loud voice echoed, this time then another voice started saying the blood, the blood, the blood continuously. The angel then took me to a window and showed me an altar of sacrifice which was still dripping with the blood of Jesus. The angel then made me understand that the voice I heard was the voice of God. He told me that God is ready to come back to earth to take his righteous souls to heaven. But because Jesus was still pleading on behalf of the many souls which are yet to repent and turn from their sinful ways. Beloved, God is ready to come and take his bride to heaven, but majority of the people Jesus died for were still drowning in sin. Many people have become too familiar with the saying that Jesus is coming soon. But I wanted to assure you now that Jesus is coming sooner than soon. Please desist from anything that can take you to hell. The angel then told me that God had given me a second chance uh, because he wanted me to come back to earth and tell the world that Jesus is coming and that they should all repent from all their evil ways. Do not take this as everyday newsfeed that you have been listening to. This is very real. Even the so-called Christians which are living their life in sins should repent before it becomes too late. The angel touched me and my soul immediately entered into my body. I had already been in coma for four days. Immediately I opened my eyes. I could not stop crying and thinking about the many souls that were doomed to hell if they did not repent fast. My condition was still critical. But I knew I was going to get better because Jesus had already given me a message to tell the world. Do not be misled. Jesus Christ is coming. How much prepared are you to meet with your maker? It is only the blood of Jesus 
that is still hindering God from coming. Please, my brethren, let us make our ways right with God. Please amend your ways because Jesus is coming soonest. If you die today, where would you like to spend your eternity as heaven or hell? The choice is yours to make. God bless you.